You're listening to Enhance's bonus segment, Weird Wednesday. Weird Wednesday is our time to talk about the strange, the unsettling, and the spooky. Hello, Enhance listeners. Thank you so much for tuning in to our very first Weird Wednesday episode. We love that for us. We love it. (laughs) Yeah, this is just our time to talk about really anything we want to because we have a lot of weird interests. No, our lives are not just about self-help and healing. Uh, We like weird, dark things as well. I guess to start us off today, we can kind of tell you a little bit what Weird Wednesday will look like. Basically, Gabby and I will get together at some point before the third Wednesday of every month, and we will both have a topic that are kind of related in a way, but not completely related, so it's still a little diversity. And Gabby is going to teach me about her topic, and then I will teach her about my topic, and you guys get to listen to the whole shit show. And they're like the same topic, but like not the same topic, but like the same topic. (laughs) Yeah, kind of, exactly. So I guess it's a good time to introduce your topic, Gabby. Would you like to get us started? Sure. So welcome to Weird Wednesdays. I'm going to talk today about dream interpretation um, and just kind of like some background about it, you know, some history behind it, any kind of science conspiracy that might be relevant to the topic and then also talk about you know uh different basic interpretations that people go for uh some of our own personal experiences and then we'll uh, give you some resources that i like to use and kind of go from there so nice a little outline for you if you just wanted to fast forward at any point but i hope you don't i hope you like listening to my voice <laughs> um <laughs> So first, let's... You know, I, a lot of people have said that, though. They have said that you have such a clean and crisp voice, and you have, like, the perfect voice for this. So, very excited uh, that Thank you're going to start you. doing some episodes <laughs> th- uh, th- where you're the host interviewing people, because it'll give people a break from my uh, nasally gay voice. Oh my <laughs> god, no. Stop it. Stop it. You're too mean to yourself. No, I, I mean, thank you. I mean, I like to think that I have a very... Um, radio podcast-esque you know attitude voice yeah your voice is an aesthetic so oh my you do god. like asmr oh my Today gosh gonna talk about <laughs> dream interpretation <laughs> we about to sit oh, down no, and humble perfect, people. I, have the, I have the perfect asmr i'm about to open my lacroix ready wow, wow. <laughs> Chris, that was so please. beautiful i don't even know how to react i don't even know how to be um, wow. Okay. Wow. My whole body. Wow. Shook. Anyway, dream interpretation is really just the looking at putting a meaning to actions that are happening in your dreams. Now, mm-hmm. a lot of different cultures back in the day, both ancient and, you know, also current, rely on dreams as a form of communication and attaching meaning to the context of our nightly processing. We do know that there's basic studies of the REM cycle, which is how you sleep in psychology and how they try to um, put that together to say that dreams, you know, do come from just your mental processes being your mental processes. But there's other people that think that it is interpreted in another way. Um, Oh, yeah. I'm one of those people. I'm one of the people that believe that dreams can have absolute meaning. And uh, Gabby can tell you I actually do some dream interpretation. Not professionally, but it has become a hobby of mine. So people come to me a lot of times to have dreams interpreted. Same. I'll tell you. Yeah. I mean, but I'm better than Gabby, so I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> My jaw just literally hit the I know. floor. I cannot be believe. Like, you know what? I'm no longer co-hosting Enhance. You're done. <laughs> You're done. You're finished. You're over. More often than not, dreams usually in, you know, past and present were interpreted by intelligent, well-respected members of society that kind of held like a higher position. So there was a lot of people in the medical community, obviously. Then you got the people in the church that were at some point interpreting dreams. Then you got someone that you just simply trusted or respected. And we're kind of getting into that more. Like me or Gabby. Yeah, exactly. So like you're kind of getting more (laughs) into the mood with that. So um, first though, I kind of want to talk about how you know, from ancient to now, it's kind of been looked at. First, you know, I want to start with like Egyptian times. I think just in general, everyone thinks Egypt and Egyptians culture, faith back in the day, all of that stuff was super interesting. So um, the dream world pretty much existed between the land of the living and the world on the other side. So like afterlife. Um, and that world, you know, also had 
you know, deities, different spirits of the dead, all that good stuff. So dreams were a form of communication to and from humans and those entities, which was really interesting. And some of those dreams were very straightforward, easy to understand. Some of them were not. Um, there was a young pharaoh, Thutmose the fourth, I believe it was. Um, and he fell asleep and he had a dream of the shadow of the Sphinx. And in that dream, the Sphinx told him, there's sand covering me. Like, boy, we got to do some damage. Like, what we need to... We need to make this look like we are a good pharaoh and rule this land. And so then he took that clear message as they would have taken at the time and became one of the most well-known pharaohs of the Egyptian time. Fast forward just slightly, we go into ancient Greek history. And they're usually divided into two types in the Greek world. So dreams can be message dreams, so kind of the same as, you know, the Egyptians. But then they also think there's not a direct interpretation, but some kind of symbolic dreams. They were like, okay, it can be really straightforward from a deity or something of the divine, or it can be a symbolic dream. And it could just mean like the grass is actually greener on the other side when it was actually dead in your dream. Then a little more fast forward, we're gonna look more at the Jewish faith and starting the Christian Catholic faith by looking at like the Torah and Bible. So there was a lot of dreams in both New Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament is Torah pretty much so in the Torah as well, where they were very into the symbolic dreams part of it. They really felt like they had a lot of narrative passages in their dream, but only certain little actions of certain dreams would mean something and they would have to learn what that symbol was to figure out what the dream was going to say. Versus the Bible in the New Testament, there were dreams that were interpreted that showed how um, it was a little bit more direct. What, did I say something? You said interpreted. Okay, look. <laughs> I'm trying to read my notes and talk at the same time. It's, it's so hard. <laughs> thinking's hard, okay? I don't, Interpreted. I don't like thinking and reading at the same time. Anyway, um, but pretty much what happened there, for an example, there was a dream uh, that Joseph, that was married to Mary, mother of God, had a dream before Mary was told that she was going to be pregnant and said, like, you need to be with her, like, please stay with her, you know, God wants you to, you know, help this woman and, you know, protect her because this is what's going to happen. Joseph took it quite literally. So you have kind of a little bit of both, but most of them are going to be those symbolic dreams where a tree means growth. So that's kind of I like, like trees. I like trees too, you're growing. So yeah, that was kind of like the ancient times. So now we're going to segue into the modern times. We first look at Sigmund Freud. A lot of you know him from psychology. He did a yeah. lot of work in that regard. And that really, you know, helped psychology as a whole. Um, but one of the things that he touched on were interpretation of dreams. And he decided and believed that all dreams are connected to repressed desires. And he believed it was mostly sexual in nature. It's a little spicy, but... Was he the same psychologist that had, what, the Oedipus complex? That's a great question. I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure... Oh, okay. Hold on. We're going to Google insert piano music. Sigmund Freud. All right. Yeah, so... I was about to say, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's him, but I don't yeah, want to be he wrong. He was kind of a quack job. Um, he was, I mean, he had a lot of cool stuff, but he was a quack job. Uh, basically, if you guys don't know what that is, it's just basically where he was like, children inherently have an attraction for their parents, specifically the son to the mom or some shit like that. Yeah, he was very about connection, and he was a very, very um, big proponent in any type of sexual desire. And therefore, he believed that dreams were a place where you repressed, and they would just, your yeah. sexual nature would come in and, like, pretty much project in your dreams. Wow. Um, he also was, you know, kind. he kind of put it in the sense of, like, you know, it's where you can be honest with yourself, Um because you're free from any type of societal pressure or embarrassment. Your dreams are a place where you can feel safe to have those desires come forth, especially those sexual ones, which is why he is the way he is. You know, that make, just looking back at this like psychology of like when I was growing up, um, because, you know, you guys know I was a little closeted child. I tried to be straight for like 18 years of my life and finally was like, fuck it, I'm queer. But anyways, 
Um, so whenever I was younger, though, I used to have dreams a lot, even though I was like choosing to be straight according to my religion and everything. Um, that I would have dreams where I would be in like relationships with guys, but it would be in this like magical world where nobody cared. There you go. I know it would be like this magical world where like. I would still have all my friends, and my mom didn't care, and, like, I was able to go to church and be a nice little Christian boy, but I had a boyfriend, and it was, like, nice. And then I'd wake up and be like, oh, gosh, I have sinned. (laughs) Well, and, you know, and here's the thing, though, that would follow really closely with Freud's whole thing about, you know, making a space in your mind where you're safe that you don't have to hide any anything. It's your world in there. So if you want it to be... A magical land where everyone loves you and all of that it is what it is so i it, it's it it follows through but then you got then you got carl jung he didn't think any dreams expressed any unconscious desires okay he thought right he thought that it was more of the ancient thought so he thought it was more interpretation symbolism more than this like repressing of desire oh, okay so he like had an ego basically so he reverted back uh-huh. yeah he reverted <laughs> back to like what most ancient like history has shown with dreams mm-hmm. um but he did say and note that also dreams can be a great source of creativity um and indicate future things happening um which i feel like in that like little last part he added there is very true to yeah. me because I have a lot of really weird dreams that 100% come true. Like oh, it absolutely. will not even be, it will not even be a symbolic dream. It yeah. will literally be like, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to get said. This is what's going to happen. This is what it's yeah. like pretty. And I'm like, huh? and every thing. time I have one of those dreams, I literally freak out because it's, <laughs> it's really intimidating for me. Why? I mean, <laughs> Because, because they're like crazy. Like one time I had this dream that someone that I have no idea who they are. I've never met them in my life was going to be pregnant. I know how many months they were going to be pregnant. I know who they were pregnant by. I know how they told that person they were pregnant. I know all of it. Wow. And it was a very weird thing because it was definitely like I was fully the third party situation here. Like I was not involved because i didn't know this person i knew the person they were getting pregnant by but i didn't know them at all yeah and so i think like that was the most recent one that one really freaked me out stressed me out uh because that was (laughs) okay sam thanks but it really freaked me out because i was like uh what like no way yeah. I was like, you're lying. You get, like, you know, was... You're joking. You read my mind, and you knew that I had this dream, and you're playing a big fat joke on me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, honest to God, when the person told me, I was like, ha, you're funny. Like, you you just, you know. And I, I never told this person my dream until they told me, and I don't even know if they believed me after that, because they were probably like, oh, you're just making things up. But, like, it was pretty scary to me. So, like, my, Jung's theory with, um, it becoming directly true very much sits with me. But then I also think there are, you know, certain dreams that are repressed. And I do think there's certain dreams that are, you know, more symbolic. And then you got the ones that are just too real. And like, I don't, you kind of, I just hope you get the right type of dream. If you, like, if you're comfortable with things coming legit true, I mean, go off, sis, good for you. But I've had dreams like that since I, I was like a child. Where I have, like, just dreams of the yeah. future. Dreams come true. And, like, oh, also, no, like, same. hopping into other people's dreams. Literally ever since I was a kid. Me and friends having the same dreams, but from different points of view. Or, like, me going to people in dreams and being like, Hey, yo, what's up? I also have dreams where, like, dead like dead people, like, people that have passed will come and chat with me. Oh, yeah. So then we're gonna... Let's let's keep going here. I'm, I'm almost done with the big chunk. Um... It's not really a conspiracy theory, but it is a cl- it is a theory, um, and it's called the threat simulation theory. And what this is is why dreams state that dreams are allowed to prepare us for different threats or dangers in our life. So Finnish researchers found that if we have a dream that is 
kind of given us a nightmare or a threat that we think we could have in our real life, it is like we are rehearsing it in our brain during that dream. Um, and it, you know, requires the cognitive mechanisms in our brain to like figure out how to avoid this threat or avoid even the perception of the threat. And then finding that later in life, if that does come up or something similar comes up, that dream is pretty much helping us avoid that threatening thing by making it non-threatening in real life because we already rehearsed it in our brains. So that is a study that has come up recently. And this is why I'm like, it's like a theory, but it's also a conspiracy theory, but it's not because anything to do with dreams is pretty much a pseudoscience. There's just a lot of different things that play into that. Dreams are dreams. Dreams are very individualistic. And so therefore there's not, sometimes there's just not a common way of looking at them. Like I said, there are common interpretations and in how people say like, oh, here's some patterns, but there's not like a, direct science approach to them. These are the top three that I found. You might find different, but these are the ones that I feel like people have the most. So teeth falling out. I literally like, had a teeth falling out dream the other day. Literally the other dude, day. Dude, <laughs> I get so scared when I get a, my, a teeth falling out dream. It's so scary. Yeah, what did you find that, because I, I had, like looked it up and it said you have to, like it's telling you to be careful what comes out of your mouth. Is like, what did you find? Yeah, so that's a very true. So there's that interpretation, so I won't go over that one. But there's another one. So um, usually they say, you know, if you're, if they fall out while you're talking or they dissolve while you're talking or crack, that means you um, either are saying something wrong or something in that regard, or you might be afraid of saying the wrong thing or struggle with a feeling of inferiority or loss of confidence whoa are you okay all right are you losing confidence uh, actually no really here recently i would say that i've been like more confident than i've ever been in my entire life but i'll give you context because normally this is how it goes in my uh, sleep and this may also contribute to it i have a tendency to grind my teeth in my sleep mm. it's gotten a lot better as i've gotten older but it is very much a stress thing so if i've had a very stressful day or been under a lot of stress i'll like grind my teeth in my sleep and so in my dream, I have a lot of weird tendencies, and I can get into it in my part because my part also kind of touches on some of this. Um, but in my dreams, I have a tendency for like physical sensations to cross over into my dream. An example of this is that if I have nightmares a lot of times, um, I'll, my heart will start beating in real life. Like in my body, my heart will start beating really fast. And so in my dream, it makes like the entire dream vibrate. So, like, every time my heart goes, doo -doo, like, the dream will shake. And so then oh. I, like, become aware that I'm in a dream. And then I'm like, oh, okay, this isn't real. I'm just having a nightmare. And then I just, like, close my eyes in the dream. And when I open my eyes, I'm opening them in my body. And so another way that this crosses over is that whenever I grind my teeth, whenever that happens in the dream, that crosses over as my all of my teeth are loose. And so, mm -hmm. or if I'm grinding specific teeth, um, it, like, will cross over that they're, like, those specific teeth were loose. And the last time that I had a dream falling out, I mean, a teeth falling out dream, um, it was my canine teeth. And I've never had one like that before. Normally, it's, like, my back molars, because that's where I grind my teeth the most. And, like, it even sharpens it. I know that sounds, like, crazy, but when I grind my teeth a lot in my sleep, it, like, sharpens my teeth. And I accidentally, like, bite my tongue all the time. And that's not, like, a cool, like, mm. I'm a vampire kind of thing. Like, that's a, like, it's <laughs> unhealthy. And it's, like, breaking my teeth. You know, like, and it, like, well, literally, I'll accidentally, like, bite my tongue and stuff like that. But, yeah, the last time I did it, it was um, my canine teeth. And I remember that in the dream, I kept, like, feeling them in, like, my bottom canines. And I was, like, they're loose. I can literally feel them being loose. And then all of a sudden, I pushed one too much, and it, like, popped out. And Ooh. so when that happened, like, I just lost control and started, like, accidentally pulling all of them out. And I could literally feel my, like, teeth going under, I mean, my fingers, like, going underneath the teeth. And, like, I could feel it, you know, coming out. And so when I woke up, I was like, oh, thank God. Like, because that's one of yeah. my biggest fear is, like, my teeth falling out or a tooth getting chipped or something like that. So. Yeah. The last time I had a dream like that, I, like, I was, like, in my, I was, like, at my old house that I used to live at. And I had a roommate there, which it wasn't my roommate at the time. It was somebody else. And I was just like talking to them. And all of a sudden it was like, doo, 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 and I could just feel them falling Ooh. out. And I was like, oh my God, what's going on? Like I was looking in the mirror, like terrified. Like, oh, it was, 
it was something else and it, it ended up relating to what yeah. was going on in my real life at the time but it was definitely not something i would love to go through again yeah i bet um whenever so i guess like trigger warning if you don't like the talk of blood um about to bring it up but in your like teeth falling out dreams do you have like does do your like does your mouth bleed no see mine never do either but this most recent one they did like this most recent one like my teeth bled like out where they were falling out at and it very much felt like i just had gotten a loose tooth and it fell out you know so that was the only time that I've ever had, like, the experience of, like, tasting and, like, feeling blood, like, come out of my mouth whenever I had, like, teeth falling out. Interesting. Yeah, I've never had any blood. So, Gabby, tell me. What does that mean? I don't know. Let's look it up. So, um, a resource I like to use. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't get that far. I, I was, like, there was, like, like, the three main things, and then it was, like, and then there's, like, other ways. And I'm, like, okay, yeah, we're not reading that. Dreams where your teeth are... Falling and bleeding. My favorite resource to use is Dream Mood. So if you ever want to check out DreamMoods.com, if you need that, that's the one I like to use. Um. Oh, okay. So with that, mm -hmm. falling out and bleeding teeth um, is a sign of closeness. And this refers to you being close with your friends and some particular enemies, if that so applies. Ooh. So maybe your best friends are just coming, like becoming more of your close best friends. Yeah. Um, or if you're, there's an someone that you're not agreeing with at the time, maybe that also is yeah, coming um, into it. Yeah, that's very interesting because in the past like month or so, oh, actually really since I've like come to Charlotte, but specifically like in the last month or so, I have just felt very, very secure in all of my interpersonal relationships. And, um, and I won't say that's, like, the first time in my entire life that I felt secure. I've, like, you know, there's been points in life where I was like, oh, wow, I just really like all my friendships right now. But as we know, like, we've had, I've had to go through a process of, like, cutting out toxic people and, like, releasing people and things like that. And so over the past, like, month or so, I've just been like, wow, I'm really, like, I'm very lucky to have the friends that I have, to have the, like, close family members that I have, and to have the, like, work relationships that I have because working on this movie I've gotten to like work with a lot of really cool people so I think that makes sense like I think that uh, saying that I have a sense of like closeness right now I do feel very close to all of the people in my life and I feel like um, every single one of them are very special and bring something unique to my life um, I just wish that I would have seen that in a way that didn't require me to have bloody teeth falling out of my mouth <laughs> I mean that's your dreams for you um but yeah, no, it's that's actually really interesting. Um, I I feel like, you know, bleeding and bleeding teeth that are falling out, like how you know I wonder what the spiritual look at that is to connect that to being close with like closeness with your people, or <gasps> you know, you know what I just thought of too. What? dogs in dreams typically are a symbol of like or at least for like what i've done in like my past research and stuff they're a symbol of like loyalty and fidelity and things like that and so I are you my, trying like, to like upstage me that's what i was literally gonna say in my next I'm part so sorry you know what whenever so i finish rude. the statement i'll pretend that i didn't say that and then you can <laughs> say it and i'll be like what whoa i had no idea but um yeah act shot maybe like <laughs> Maybe my canine teeth falling out because, like, canine dog, you know, whatever. Maybe that was, like, a symbol oh. of, like, all the close people in my life right now are, like, truly loyal to me. And that's something that I've, like, craved for a very long time is, like, to feel like the people in my life are loyal and, like, understand loyalty because it's been a struggle, like, you know. It's been a struggle, like, people, like, adults these days just don't understand what loyalty is. And that's, like, in friendships, relationships, family, like, they just don't understand what loyalty means, you know? And so I think maybe the canine teeth specifically could symbolize, like, feeling like the people in your life are actually loyal to you and, like, have your yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, that's completely true. And honestly, like, I'm reading – I'm just going to go ahead and hop into that. I'll go back to the mm -hmm. other two common ones in a second because I do do a little section about animal interpretations and dreams. Ooh, okay. Um, and so literally what I wrote was dogs are a symbol of loyalty, trust, and unconditional love. Oh, my God, okay. really? Yes, and Holy then I shit. said this – I had no idea. Yeah, and then it says, this dream is related to good times with friends unless the dog behaves in an aggressive way, which in that case mean is a warning not to trust your friend. Wow. 
Is that no deep? Sh- that is so deep. I don't even know. Who would have thunk <laughs> that dog symbolized like loyalty and like tr- who would have thunk? I had no idea. But that's what I'm saying. So that's why dreams are so interesting. So yeah. kind of reverting back to the uh, three top comments. So we do have the teeth falling out. Second one is like legit falling in your dreams. Like, oh. Like falling off a ledge or just like walking and tripping and falling. Just something about falling means that something has gone off the tracks for you. Ooh. So you might slipped up at work or you maybe like you messed up like some friendship or relationship um but somewhere you've lost control over an issue so that's what falling in your dream means so i think that's really interesting can i i'm so sorry i literally keep jumping in i'm so sorry is there jump in brother okay so dude like that's another one of my most common like stress dreams is falling and so but here's the thing so we've talked about this before and i don't want to get into it too too much because like i really want one of us to cover it in a future um weird wednesday but you know that I used to, like, lucid dream all the time mm-hmm. without, like, it wasn't on purpose. It wasn't something I ever taught myself to do. It was just something that naturally happened. And so, you know, like, for me, it wasn't that I could control the dream around me. It was that I was aware that I was dreaming. And so then everything I did from that point on was within the logic of that dream world. So say I was living in, like, an apocalypse, like, post-apocalyptic world where, like, there were, like, factions or some shit like that. And, like, you know, sure. like, everything, like, divergent, you know, but, or whatever. Say so I was living Are in... Are we in the like, divergent world? <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah. So, like, if I was dreaming like that and I knew that that was the world that I was in in that moment in that dream, I would, like, gain awareness, like, very early in the dream and be like, oh, this is a dream. But then I would never, like, break away from the dream. It wasn't something that I couldn't control the dream. All I could do is just make decisions based off of what I knew about the dream, you know? And so whenever I stopped lucid dreaming, it was because I had this, like, really crazy nightmare that um, it wasn't, like, it was strange. I wouldn't say it's a nightmare because it wasn't inherently, like, scary. But the end of it, I was like, something's not right. And the whole, like, heartbeat thing happened, and I woke up, and I've never been able to lucid dream ever since. And so there's still something, like, there's some type of awareness that I have when I'm in dreams that this is gonna sound so so contradictory there's a type of awareness that i have in dreams where i'm not aware of it if that makes sense like i know like you're aware but you're not aware like you can't control yeah exactly like i'm not aware of the awareness if that makes sense like yeah like okay cool like i know i'm dreaming but i don't know that i know i'm dreaming you know and that probably makes no sense whatsoever but in my falling dreams that's one of the only times that i talk a tap into the awareness because they always happen with, like, I'm on top of something really, really tall. And, like, a lot of times it'll be, like, honestly, like a broken down roller coaster. You may have something in your little dream notes about that. But um, broken down roller coaster, broken down Ferris wheel, where I'll be, like, on top of a mountain, on top of a building, something like that. It's usually some type of, like, metal fixture, though. And mm-hmm. I will slip and fall. And I will try to catch myself on things as I'm falling down. Like, I'll be hitting different parts of it. And I'll try to catch myself, and I never do. And then I turn, like, it's always this one moment where I, like, gain awareness. And it's very similar to, like, nightmares. But I'll, like, flip myself around and I'll be looking down at the ground as I'm falling. And whenever I get really close to the object, there's a part of me, like, I will be freaking out. But then it's like I get this calm that rushes over me. And I always hear my own voice in my head say, hey, it's okay. Just hit the ground because you're just going to wake up then. And I just immediately am like, oh, yeah, that's right. I am dreaming. And I just close my eyes right before I hit the ground. And when I hit the ground, I, like, wake up in my body. And it happens every single time I have a falling dream. That is so strange. I don't even I don't even know how to comment on that. Because, like, I know for me, like, I, I don't ever – I'm not going to say I never have lucid dreams. I, pr- I definitely have. I just don't have, like, a lot of recollection of it. Because I think – I'm aware that my dreams are dreams, but I don't ever want to take control because I want to know what I need to look out for. So this is really crazy, okay? So dreaming of cats might seem lovely and innocent, but actually it is a symbol it's it's a symbol of magic and hidden powers. Oh, yeah, okay. All right. I was about to say you sounded like it was going to be negative and I was like Oh, God, I've always read that they were positive unless it was, like, specific interactions. Yeah, no, no, no. It has to do with, like, magic and hidden powers. Um, They're associated with, like, a feminine type of, like, divine nature. And so 
they actually warn a lot against treachery and deceit, um, especially um, with trusted friends. So hi. So basically, hi, they're trying to say, basically, my cats are just warning me that, like, you can't trust anyone. Don't trust those fucking dog dreams. No one is loyal to you. You can only trust us. And for that, we won't kill you in your sleep. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> At a minimum. For those, those of you that can't see, so anyone besides Gabby, I'm just giving my little cat kisses over and over again on his forehead. He's so cute. He is a handsome baby. Anyways, all right, I'll let you go back in. He's like, no, don't put me down, father. Speaking of cats, so the website that you looked at for, like, your dream interpretations for cats, did you see anything about specific colors or fur patterns for cats? Because that's something I've looked into a lot. Not specifically. So the the sources I use are a little bit more general. Now, mm. also there's the way of people, how they read interpretation, which we'll get there in a second, um, which... Let me get there in a second because I think we need to go over two more little interpretations that I did and then we can dive into that. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much the other two I have is um, common one was the naked when you shouldn't be in your dreams. Like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's common when you finally like see yourself or, like in front of a crowd speaking or something or if you're just like all of a sudden naked when you're not supposed to be. Uh, you feel like you're being phony or worried about something in your life that has been exposed. And it could also, you know, indicate feelings of feeling off, like caught off guard or shocked that something happened in your waking life. Why have I never Googled about like naked dreams? I guess because they're just so like, Because you're not the queen of dream interpretation. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I forgot. You're right. Right. Um, Remember when you said earlier that you were better at it than I am? I don't think so. <laughs> Um, yeah, so basically, I do have those dreams a lot, too. I feel like maybe a lot of people have those dreams, though. I feel like the naked dream is, like, very common. Um, yeah. Those are the three I've top been... common ones. Those are? Mm-hmm. Um, so, I just, I don't know, like, that's something that, yeah, like, I never thought about that. I don't know, now next time I have a naked dream, I'm gonna have to dig into it and be like, what do I feel vulnerable about right now in my life? What do I it's feel exposed It's for? really interesting. It's so interesting. I've had dreams like that and I'm like, oh god. Jesus. I can't remember what. You know what's, you know what's weird though? Most of the time in my like nakey dreams, now there are the normal ones where it's like I'm naked somewhere I shouldn't be and I'm like trying to hide and shit like that or people are like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? I also have, this is going to be a TMI, but you know what, oh well. I also have like pooping dreams. <laughs> Where like I'm I've not heard people. that one. I know. Where like I'm naked and I'm pooping in front of people and it's like so vulnerable. So like you know, so I bet that would be like on the same That's very <laughs> interesting. I've never had a dream like that. I mean I've had also... like I've had like sexy time dreams, but like You've had that's... what? Like sexy time dreams? Oh yeah, okay. We all Everyone has had we a sexy, time, sexy time, dream. time dream. Yes. You but, got it real um, bad. But the other Nike dreams that I have though this is the thing that's this is the really interesting one that I think you're gonna be like what and I feel like I know I feel like we both will get what it means the pooping one I'm, wasn't enough no this one's like <laughs> this one's this one's chiller this is a chill oh, Nike okay. Dream, okay a little bit yeah. more relaxed <laughs> I will be like Nike in a dream and everyone around me will be like why are you worried about it why are you Ooh. like just chill out yeah and then even sometimes I'll look I'll be like well because like I'm naked and no one else is and then I'll look and they're all naked too but it's, like, not sexual. They're just, like, they're, like, it's cool. Like, why are you worried about it? Like, it's fine. And then we just, like, carry on doing things, like, normal dream things throughout the dream. But we're on Nike now. Like, well, maybe that, so like, reverts like... into, like, you trusting your intuition at that point And, like, yeah. oh, that's so freaking cool. I've never yeah, or like, like that. whatever you're, like, worried about, like, being exposed, it's something that you shouldn't be worried about being expo exposed because people aren't going to care. Or you're going to find out that, like, yeah. you have more in common yeah. with people than, like, what you thought. I, I love that, bro. That's, that's art right there. That does, that happens a lot. Those are my, like, the pooping one and that one are my to two most common, like, makey dreams. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, the last interpretation I have has to do with my dreams um, and is seeing a bear in your dreams. Okay. Like a like a bear or a bears. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and that is associated with like strength, security, and power. Um, they are very family oriented creatures. Oriented, yeah. oriented. I don't know how to say that word. Sure. Um, and they are linked to childhood and maternal instincts. So when nice. you have a dream with a bear in it, you're you're going a lot towards like mommy bear instincts, which is kind of funny because for me in my life, I I am very much uh, a mom friend type of person. Um, yeah. I feel like I do a lot of like the comforting and stuff. Um, I think I also try. I'm trying to like kind of break out of that too because you can't be mommy bear all the time. Sometimes you gotta just lay it how it is, you know. But yeah. um, I think what's really interesting about that is that because I have all of these several dreams about like bears and like stuff with like related to certain topics, a lot of that does come into full fruition for me in real life. So then mm. it's like, okay, you're gonna have to be the mama bear to this person for like this topic so yeah very interesting so yeah and then kind of going back into like dream interpretation there's so many ways you can interpret dreams um the resources i use is Twelve Thousand dreams interpreted book by linda shields and gustav Enman miller um i think i found that book i mean you can find that book anywhere but i think the last place i saw it because it's still kind of a more popular book um mm -hmm. I think the last time I saw it was in Earthbound. I'm not saying Earthbound mm -hmm. is the best resource, but it is a resource. Um, <laughs> we love you, Earthbound. Anyway, um, and then dreammoods.com, like I've mentioned before, if you can't grab that book or a book, uh, that's the ones I use. There's a lot of different theories on, you know, which one means what. So, you know, just take what resonates with you, what's relating to you at the time. Just really, you know, focus yourselves. How I like to interpretate, interpretate, interpret interpret dreams wow yeah this episode everyone's gonna be like she can't even talk what the heck okay <laughs> um how i do it is that i pick out the certain general terms of what kind of happened so i fell in my dream there was a this type of animal in my dream and this is what they were doing and then i go look up those two separate things and try to form a connection so sometimes that helps me and i think that's a really basic way of doing it um there are people who spiritually are very inclined and then can just be like boom you know this is actually what it means they don't have to look it up no nothing um so bless their hearts for doing that for society um, but yeah, so that's kind of a little bit about dream interpretation. Um, that's my little segment. Um, but if you have any comments or if you want us to go further on it on a different episode or anything like that, just don't hesitate to, uh, let us know, comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. So, yeah. Um, to introduce my topic today, yes. I am covering sleep paralysis. Gabby, have you ever had sleep paralysis? Um, I have before. Four. It was a very really? scary experience, oh but we made it. <laughs> we made so it at through. The end, um, I've actually I've had sleep paralysis too, and so at the end I'm gonna go through a few of my sleep paralysis experiences, and I would love for you to also share yours. But yes. um, to get us started, uh, I'm just gonna kind of walk through uh, what sleep paralysis is, the history of it, and all that good jazz. So basically, um, according to WebMD. <laughs> Um, oh. Sleep paralysis is the feeling of being conscious without being able to move whenever you are coming either out of a sleep or into a sleep. You're in a weird place between sleep and awake and border that area for a little while. Hallucinations and paralysis, of course, are super common. And there are actually two different types of sleep paralysis. There is, now I am not going to pronounce these correctly, so <laughs> don't judge. You're with us. <laughs> but there's <laughs> hypnagogic or predimortal pre pre demortal yeah um sleep paralysis and this wow. happens when you thank you i did so well <laughs> um this happens when you are falling asleep and experience sleep paralysis so um as you relax and your body falls asleep you are supposed to become less aware of your body because that's where you start to like detach and fall asleep but for some reason um where you would typically not notice that change you gain awareness and you've now noticed that something has happened with your body and when that happens that's when you realize that you're not able to move anymore and you typically mm. cannot speak um and so if you remain or become aware that's where sleep paralysis kind of happens also um 
that's where hallucinations typically start. Then the other type is a hypnopompic, hip, hypnopompic or post-dormital. Oh, pre-dormital and post-dormital. Okay, that's like pre-sleep and after sleep. Anyways. So, R.I.P. R.I.P. Anyways. Oh um, but hypnopompic or uh, post-mortal uh, sleep paralysis happens when waking up. That's basically, once again, the same thing, but you're sleeping, you wake up, and then you, while you're awake, you're still bordering that spot between um, awake and asleep, and because of that, you gain awareness that your body can't move and that you can't speak, and then hallucinations typically happen. Basically, when you're sleeping, you oscillate between two types of sleep, and uh, Gabby, you kind of touched on one of them which is REM rapid eye movement but then there's also non-rapid eye movement and so one cycle between these two uh, lasts for about 90 minutes non-rapid eye movement takes up about 75 percent of your sleep and during this your body relaxes and restores quote unquote itself so this is your healing state of sleep so that's why like whenever you go to sleep and you have a cut or something like that and when you wake up it it's now in a completely different place than it was when you went to bed that's because of non uh, rapid eye movement sleep at the end of non rapid eye movement sleep is when you shift into REM which is rapid eye movement your eyes move super quickly and this is when you experience dreams and so the rest of your body stays relaxed and your muscles quote unquote turn off and um, if you gain awareness during this state of sleep then that's when you may get the sensation that you can't move or speak and have hallucinations it's because you're tapped into that kind of like dream mm. state of sleep so sleep paralysis a lot of people don't realize this um, it's actually super common um, about four out of ten people experience sleep paralysis at some point in their lives potential causes for sleep paralysis are a lack of sleep a sleep schedule that changes, mental conditions such as stress or bipolar disorder, sleeping on your back, other sleep problems such as narcolepsy or nighttime leg cramps, which I do get those sometimes, not as much in adulthood, mm. but I definitely did as a teenager, use of a certain medication such as those for ADHD. That oh my god, your favorite. <laughs> I know. Um, and substance abuse. Potential solutions for sleep paralysis, according to sleepfoundation.org. First and foremost, see a doctor. There's a chance that there's something else going on that is causing the sleep paralysis, like an narcolepsy or some other disorders like we talked about. Right. So um, just it's very important to consult a doctor if it becomes an issue and you have it a lot. The next thing is don't think that you're crazy. A lot of people don't realize how common it is, like I said. And accepting that it is a normal thing and something not to be ashamed of or embarrassed of actually can cause your symptoms to kind of decrease and can help your overall mental state whenever you have sleep paralysis. And then the next thing that Sleep Foundation said, which I thought was really interesting, was um, improve sleep hygiene. And I was at first like, what the hell does that even mean? But it refers to daily habits and your bedroom setting that impact sleep quality. And, you know, I have like thought about that and I was like, you know, that does make sense. You know, I just like, so whenever I was experiencing sleep paralysis before, and I won't get too much into it because there were a bunch of specific conditions that fell into that, but sure. it was during times of stress. You know, I was not handling stress very well because my first time ever was, never, was my senior year in college. But then after that too, um, I was working night shift at a hospital during COVID. So my sleep hygiene had completely flipped. I was like nightmares. getting off. nightmares. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I was getting off at like 6 a.m., coming home, going straight to sleep. And sleeping throughout the daytime. And I wasn't getting deep sleep either because my circadian rhythms were already based off of sleeping at nighttime, you know. And then some healthy tips are following the same schedule for going to bed and waking up every day, including on weekends. So making sure that you stay consistent with when you go to sleep and when you wake up. Uh, keeping a set pre-bed routine that helps you get comfortable and relaxed. Outfitting your bed with the best mattress and best pillow for your needs. Setting up your bedroom that have limited intrusion from light or noise, reducing consumption of alcohol and caffeine, especially in the evening, putting away electronic devices, including cell phones, for at least one half hour uh, before bed. I feel like a lot of those are not going to be doable for <laughs> the, the cell phone one is hard yeah. for me. I, I fall, So I know there's a lot of people that fall asleep watching TV or something like that. My yeah. TV is TikTok. Um, how unfortunate. But it, it's true. <laughs> it's 100% true. And so, like, 
I can't get tired without watching TikTok. Yeah, I definitely think this specifically goes for people that may be experiencing sleep paralysis. There are three different categories of hallucinations that you can have during sleep paralysis. Um, You can have intruder hallucinations, which this is like the overwhelming sensation or feeling that there is a presence or like foreign entity, an intruder, something in your room with you. And that's like, that's a very common type. Um, and that's, so I have like a mix, that's, that's normally a really common one that I have, but I have a mix between that one and another one. The next one is chest pressure hallucinations, also called oh. incubus hallucinations. Okay. This is basically where you feel like there is a pressure on your chest, and that you could also feel like you're suffocating, and typically your hallucination is that there is something on top of you, on top of your chest, like holding you down and suffocating you. And then the last one is vestibular motor hallucinations. And this is one that can incite sensations like you're flying or um, like you're having an out-of-body experience and things like that during hallucinations. So to me, like, this is one of many times throughout my research that I've found where sleep paralysis kind of relates to astral projection, which I don't want to get too much into because, again, I would love for one of us to cover that in a later episode, but still very, very interesting. Now to get into the history of sleep paralysis. So most of the information I'm about to read came from the National Library of Medicine. The term sleep paralysis is a very new term, and it was used in the late 1920s. Cases of sleep paralysis have been recorded for hundreds of years, um, and its medicinal documentation was in 1664 by Dutch physician. I'm going to try to pronounce it, but probably not going to get it right. This brought Van Demerbroek. 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 Yeah, we're just going to call, we're going to call him Dr. D. Um... And it uh, it was originally diagnosed using folklore by the same physician. So Dr. D was a believer of the folklores. Um, And it was called the incubus or the nightmare. Whenever it was diagnosed, they would be like, oh my gosh, you have the nightmare. Or, oh my gosh, you have an incubus. (laughs) Oh my god. That's kind of... Imagine going to the doctor today and being like, doc, I just am having such sleep problems. I don't know what to do. And he's like, oh my god, dude, you've got a demon you got a demon eating on you in your sleep. Like, you know, like... I mean, that is some... That is, like... I don't even know how to... I just, my mind is just blown. Like, they yeah. literally was like, hey, let's scare the entire human, like, race and say that they're having demon or, like, nightmares that are just so real that we don't know what to do about them. Oh, yeah, well, no, so that's the thing is that the nightmare actually wasn't thought to be, like, a, a bad dream. The nightmare they looked at as like a spirit they called it yeah. the nightmare so like that's they were basically like dude sorry you got a demon don't know what to tell you you know like um, oh my god it, that, that like reminds me of like the time like back in the day where they're like oh you have the demon let's take out the yellow vial in your body to try to heal like all of those past like deep sins it's like what <laughs> or they would like drill holes in your head to release the spirits whenever you have migraines yeah or, like, psychotic yeah episodes. oh my god what is that called there's like a proper term to that they put like a little square in your skull and like oh, take out know. the there it's a thing i oh my god i'm gonna look it up okay insert jeopardy music do 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 well, I mean, you know, like, in surgery now, that if you have, like, a brain injury or something like that, they still drill holes into your head, but it's to release pressure. Um, no, this was a different thing. Like, people believed... Okay, wait, I think I just found something. Yeah. It was uh, to help with exorcisms, incantation, prayer, anointment, and other various mystical rituals to drive out evil spirits. Wow. da 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 And what is it called? Why won't they just tell me what it is? It, they, they said that it was very much used and believed from, uh, like, Hebrews believed in, like, an illness was, like, afflicted upon humans because they thought, you know, there was a punishment from God for committing committing all these sins. And so to get rid of it, they would, like, some of them would, like, open their heads to, like. Ew. Yeah. No, Kinda this is a whole out. thing. Like, I'm going to find skull drills. Oh wow, that was such a crazy. I name. think that's the I think that's the old way of saying it. That's yeah. definitely the old way of saying it. There's a more proper term now, but mm. um, that's what it was, and like it was like the weirdest thing. Um, yeah, and it exposes the brain to allowed operations like crano- cranotometry to be done. All right. 
Huh? Interesting. We'll do an episode on that in the future. Weird old medical practices. <laughs> yeah. Is that creepy? <laughs> no. Mm. <laughs> we need to do like the ice pick lobotomy, uh, skull drills, cover all that good shit. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so they basically used folklore to diagnose sleep paralysis back in the day, and um, to give some background on the two terms they used to diagnose it, as you guys heard, incubus is still used to classify one of the types of hallucinations, but an incubus, according to Wikipedia is a demon in male form that seeks to have sexual intercourse with sleeping women. The corresponding spirit in female form is called succubus. And I just want to say this for a second, just, you know, to put it out there. If you're looking to have sexual intercourse with someone sleeping, that's not sexual intercourse, that's sexual assault. Glad we put that out there. All right, Traumas. anyways. <laughs> yes. Yeah, don't do um, that, please. Yeah, That's a little that. scary girl hours. I mean, I literally looked like I got shot by a, a deer. Shot by yeah. a gun by a deer. Yeah. Anyway, a deer headlights. headlights. Yeah. <laughs> Are we the same oh person? Are we twin <laughs> flame? Jesus. Kidding. But yeah, so an incubus wanted to do the deed with a woman that was sleeping. Um, but in sleep paralysis, uh, it seems that the incubus didn't really have much of a sexual connotation. And uh, actually, according to the National Library of Medicine, um, it is the spirit of a dead, unbaptized baby which attacks people in their beds and cuts off their respiration by jumping on their chest and grasping their throats. Now, of course, the National Library of Medicine is not the one who like wrote this definition. This is what they believed back in the day. I just found this information on the National Library of Medicine's website. And also, apparently, the incubus was, of course, like, the overall umbrella term, but they also used the word succubus back in the day, too. Jesus. If it was, like, a man who was experiencing sleep paralysis, then they would say, like, oh, well, you have a succubus. But incubus was just the overall umbrella term, as most languages do, where they use the masculine to mean, like, an over-encompassing thing. Something kind of interesting, if you want to, like, see how sleep paralysis kind of impacted history... There is a painting called The Nightmare that was uh, painted in 1781. It's an oil painting by Swiss artist Henry Fuseli. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And I'm going to describe um, how the National Library of Medicine describes the painting. But you can literally just Google The Nightmare painting or Nightmare oil painting, Nightmare whatever. And you'll see it and you'll get why it's related to sleep paralysis. Gabby, you I'm... look in shock. I'm over it. <laughs> What? Literally, this is, like, trauma to the okay. max. Like, I, so I just Googled it, if you didn't hear me tightening. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely not. So, in a swoon, a young woman lies limply sprawled across her bed as the incubus squats grotesquely on her stomach, staring out at the viewer as if to draw them in to her nightmare. The painting is literally the clinical presentation of sleep paralysis, the nightmare and the succubus, the physical embodiment of frightening dreams, appear to have been two distinct terms referring to two different sleep manifestations, which explained occurrences of frightening disturbances in sleep. Formally, the nightmare referred primarily to episodes of terror with no sexual content, while the succubus involved sexual content. At some point, both terms became synonymous and are presently used interchangeably. It was so commonly believed that when you had a sleep paralysis episode, it was some sort of evil spirit coming to harm you. And it was believed that the incubus slash the nightmare was a descendant of Lilith. Oh, God. Yeah. So if you don't know who <laughs> Lilith is, according to Wikipedia, Lilith is a female figure in Mesopotamian and Judaic mythology, alternately the first wife of Adam and supposedly the primordial she-demon. It was believed that she was Adam's first wife before Eve, but she didn't want to obey Adam and instead wanted to be his equal. And so she either left or she was cast out of the Garden of Eden, and she decided to go party it up in hell for all of eternity. And she's even known as the mother of demons in um, some stories. So basically, she birthed all demons, which would make her the mother of the incubus. Or the nightmare spirit. So here's something interesting, all right? Get ready. So for people that are like, well, sleep paralysis is just a scientific thing, blah, 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 blah. In 1977, in Southeast Asia, more than 100 people died mysteriously in their sleep with no previously reported uh, health issues. 
And so they were dying at a rate of about 92 people per 100,000 people. And this is where they used the term um, sudden unexplained nocturnal death syndrome. And so there were no underlying causes ever found. Uh, They did tons of studies, could not figure out why they were dying. The only thing that they found is that in these specific uh, South Asian communities that these deaths were happening, there was a very, very strong belief in a nightmare spirit, and sleep paralysis was super common in these uh, communities. So the people there believed that it was a nightmare spirit coming and killing their people in the night, and that's the only thing they could find evidence for, was that there was the belief in this nightmare spirit and that there was a large amount of sleep paralysis happening throughout the communities. Whoa. So. That's kind of that's kind of crazy. They have like no other real like oh nothing wow. was ever found. That's you know? crazy. Yeah. And so there you know sleep paralysis has history is a his, has history in multiple cultures, so not just like South Asian, not in sure. pre-Christian religions or anything like, or just that, you know. Um, so in the Canadian province of Newfoundland, the nightmare is referred to as the old hag. And then while on the Caribbean island of St. Lucia, uh, the creature is called Kokma, or Kokma. All right, so now to get into some personal sleep paralysis experiences. So, Gabby, would you like to share yours? Because I know you said you have one. Um, I have one main one that I just kind of hold on to till the day I die. Um, one of the, the one that I'm going to share was at my own home, um, and I was a youngster, And I, I was like, just like laying in my bed and all of a sudden there's this black figure by my door. And at the time I had my, it was like, my bed was in this like center of the like front wall of my room where the door is. So Mm -hmm. like, it was like in my face, like it was right in front of me and it was just a, like a black shadow figure. And I was just like in my head like screaming because I couldn't move my body but then I was like you're not supposed to be here get out of here and then all of a sudden it was gone and I could like move my body and it was like the weirdest experience because I've never had anything like remotely like that I didn't think at the time that it could have been sleep paralysis but um I didn't also I didn't think it was a demon either I just thought it was just like scary looking spirit or something I don't know I was just kind of freaked out in the moment But also, when you were talking about sleep paralysis, like, I related to, like, being, like, fully conscious, but your body's, like, fully asleep type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I have that all the time, like, especially in the morning, like, if I get woken up, you know, kind of like I did this morning, I couldn't move my body, but my full, like, my body was completely conscious, like, my, I guess my brain was completely conscious that I was awake, but my body did not. But that happens yeah, to me a actually, lot. Yeah, so that is a form of sleep paralysis. It's just one without hallucinations. Yeah, like I didn't get the hallucination part with those, but like I have that very common where I'll just like, I'll like wake up and I'm like, ugh, like they made a noise. But then like I'm just laying there, like I can't move. Yeah. Until like my, I guess I go back to actual sleep for a second, then I wake up. If Which is weird. I don't know, but yeah. those are my little tidbits to this knowledge yeah um i do want to tell so before i get into mine i have something that's super interesting and i won't say any names because i did not ask his permission if i can share this or not so i won't give too many details but i'm sure he would not care but i have a friend of mine that he has like some crazy dreams i mean just like outlandish out there dreams just like i do we talk about dreams a lot because we both just have such fucking crazy dreams and so um he actually he does not he has not had sleep paralysis but he has a friend who has sleep paralysis very often and has had sleep paralysis since he was a kid and basically he would always describe this sleep paralysis demon to be like tall lanky with like cracking movements so like it would make like weird popping sounds as it moved around and it would always like come into his room with the door cracked and he would always hear it because it would be like clicking up the hall like as it walked he could hear it like clicking and stuff like that Oh, I don't like that. And so that. he would I know. And so he would basically just look over at the door and would see a hand come around the door, but it was long, like elongated fingernails, and they would, like, click around the door. And so the, the kid would always describe, like, this tall, lanky, like, dark figure 
with big shiny eyes. As the kid got older, and like he's known my friend um, since they were kids, you know, so I mean they've like have known each other since they were very very little, and that's whenever his friend started having this sleep paralysis demon. Right. But as they got older, they real or like the friend realized the sleep paralysis demon looked like my friend once he was older <sighs> so the sleep paralysis demon so the shiny eyes my friend wears glasses and it was these mm. big like he said that it would they would just like reflect light my friend's super tall super lanky the only thing he's missing is the long poppy fingers and he said that when he realized that like he can't unsee it now every time he has a sleep paralysis episode it's our mutual friend like coming into his room but a very Wait, dark that's figure. so scary <laughs> i know and so that's kind of like leads into this whole like weird theory i don't know where this came from i've heard it before well actually it's not this isn't a theory this is like a uh, more of a philosophical thought based off of dimensions so you know like we are um three-dimensional beings we are living in a sort of four-dimensional reality because time sure. is our fourth dimension Basically, though, our shadow, so when you're walking out in the open and walking in the sun, is a two-dimensional, like, reflection of us on the ground, you know? And so, basically, if our shadow is two-dimensional and we're three-dimensional, we're living in a four-dimensional reality, are we something else's shadow? And so, basically, mm. then that would get into, like, you know, we ex like we exist across all dimensions, but we only have, a, like, consciousness of this dimension because we are of this dimension, but something like us in a higher dimension has consciousness of them themselves and just thinks where it's shadow like you know what i'm saying but basically right. that whenever my friend told me about that i was like what if that's like your higher or lower dimensional self like coming into his room at night like to pay him a visit and just hang out and he's seeing a sleep paralysis demon <laughs> you know that's a good thought though like i would have never put those two together so now i'll tell you about my personal experiences with sleep paralysis. Something that I have seen so much throughout my life is, it's very simple, but this hooded figure, alright? It's always just this very, very, very tall figure that is covered in completely in a black hood. And I've seen this literally since I was a child. Well, I'll see it in dreams. I, I lived in this very, very haunted house one time where I saw two of them walking down the hall whispering. Like, it's very, like, yeah. And that was, like, the least scary experience that happened in that house. Um, so maybe I can talk about that one day. But this hooded figure I've seen since I was a kid, like, whenever I was very, very young. I mean, I had to be, like, three or four. My very earliest memory is a nightmare that I had of this hooded figure. In my senior year in college, I wake up, and I can't move. But I can, like, look around the room. And for me, my sleep paralysis episodes, it's very much that I am like still dreaming but just awake <laughs> so like when people are like oh yeah i'm like i can't move or anything like that and that's never my concern like i'm never like oh my gosh i can't move i can't speak it's never anything like that because i'm dreaming still so like when right. i try to speak like i still speak i don't physically speak but in my head i do like in the dream i do but i'm physically seeing the room around me so like i'm awake i'm looking around but i'm having a dream you know basically so I wake wow. up and I immediately sense a presence in the room with me. And I look over and I see this hooded figure, but this is the first time I've ever seen the hooded figure with his hood down. And it, it looks like a man that he is nothing, literally nothing but skin and bones. So like his head is shaped like a skull, but he just has skin tightly pressed up against his face and like mm -hmm. sunken in, bulging eyes, like... And he just, like, I can literally see the indentions of his teeth through his lips because that's how tight his skin is. He's standing over by my, like, entertainment sitter while I was in college, which was, like, right across the room from my bed. I look over at him, and he's staring at me all evilly. He says, literally, he looks at me, and he's, like, looking at me all, like, head down, eyes looking straight up. And he's got his hand kind of held out to the side, like, his left hand because he's standing at the left of my entertainment center. He looks at me, and he's like, I'm going to do it. And I was Ooh. like, please do don't do it i don't know what we're talking about but don't, don't do it and he smiles like a very evil smile and is like i'm going to and i was like please let's let's not you know how about we don't and so he's like slowly reaches down and hits the, like the top of my entertainment center with his hand and when he does 
my entertainment center and my TV like morph into this big open like cave in my wall and mm-hmm. all I can see is that it like goes straight down and like as it's forming this glowing like red light starts to shine out of it and I can see like shadows down at the bottom that That's look just like scary. I know that look like just hands reaching up and I can hear people screaming my room gets really really hot I smell like the like smell of stuff burning like burning hair and people are just like screaming bloody murder and I'm looking at him like please close it please close it and he just like smiles at me and so you know I after I snap out of this and I fully like wake up and realize that didn't actually happen I was like man this hooded figure just came in here and opened a portal to hell you know like he yeah. straight up opened oh a portal gosh. to hell man. yeah so that one was spooky wooky you know my next sleep paralysis episode, there was a collection of them that happened back to back to back. It was very specific circumstances. I was working a night shift at a hospital, getting off at 6 a.m. I also was taking Vyvanse. So if you don't know what Vyvanse is, Vyvanse is a stimulant that people sometimes take for um, ADHD. And so I was not taking it for ADHD at the time. I was taking it for binge eating disorder. This was back in 2020, a little bit before I got my ADHD diagnosis. The thing about Vyvanse is that it was actually listed in, a, in one of the articles I was reading as one of the medications that can cause sleep paralysis. paralysis. And wow. if you remember, like there was like the one about ADHD. So yeah, which Vyvanse is usually uh, like prescribed for. So anyway, so I was taking Vyvanse, and it made me so fucking paranoid. Yeah. I'm telling you, like I literally, I convinced myself that there was a woman living in my attic um that was sneaking into my apartment when i wasn't home and eating my food and sleeping in my bed and using my bathroom and i legitimately like was terrified and i actually had my best friend at the time come over while i checked the attic and i also found that the attic that in the apartment complex that i was living in apparently the apartment had burnt before because the attic was still burnt and they never fixed it Oh. Yeah, so that's something that was really spooky too, and I'm like, of course, contributed to my paranoia. Let's get into some of the sleep paralysis episodes I had during that. So, do you guys remember the good old hooded figure from the very first one I ever had? Well, mm-hmm. he came back for a part two, and he oh. brought a friend. Yeah, so I wake up, and I sleep very weird. I sleep like normally on my side or like on my back, and I have a very thin pillow that I put over my face while I'm sleeping. So like if I'm on my side, it's covering my ears and my eyes. If it's on, if I'm on my back, it's covering my eyes. Like, and it just kind of comes down to like right above my lips whenever I'm sleeping. Mm. And so I'm laying in bed, that's on my face, whatever. And I open my eyes and I look and from where my bed was, I could see directly into my bathroom. And there was a little hallway that kind of veered over to the right. And then my bathroom was at the left of the hallway. So where my bed was placed, I could like see directly into it at the mirror. But in the sleep paralysis uh, hallucination, the mirror turned into a window. And it was like pitch black outside. And outside of this window, there was a dead tree. And a tree branch was like scraping the window. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting there seeing this. And I'm not panicking or anything like that. I'm just looking at it. And for some reason, I was like... Oh, uh, yeah, the window that's in my bathroom right there, even though I knew there wasn't a window in my bathroom right there. And so I was just looking at it, and then all of a sudden, I hear shit just start getting thrown around my apartment. I didn't want to move to look, so I didn't realize I couldn't move because I was literally, like, paralyzed with fear. And so this is where it gets real spooky, okay? So this is, you know, shit's getting thrown around in my apartment, and I all of a sudden start hearing this, like, hissing whisper. Mm-mm. Nope. And run. <laughs> run and get I out. don't know what it was saying. No. Nope. It was like really close to my my uh, like face and my ears. And it was uh, this is I don't know what it means. I don't know if this is even the correct pronunciation, but this is what it was saying. It sounded like Versailles, dare say, Versailles no. But like in a hissing like Versailles. Like it was really fucking creepy. So That's like, some Harry Potter shit. Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not we ain't not doing that today no 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 oh my god yeah so i'm of course at this point i'm spook spook you know like i'm i'm not having a good time and so um 
the basically then at this point i feel like i'm about to move like i'm like okay i'm about to get up and run but once again still paralyzed because of sleep paralysis and then all of a sudden i hear another voice and this voice like comes from like i don't know like in the real world it came from like the wall next to my bed but it sounded like it came from behind me and it was like a shout and it was mm. in english it comes running forward screaming at this other voice and it's saying like no get out of here i told you to leave get out of here like literally just yelling at him and he's like you leave him alone you like literally defending me at this point this is where the pillow has now moved off my face and I kind of catch the glimpse of two hooded figures fighting each other. And there's the one that was, like, doing the weird Harry Potter chant into my ear. And the other one that was, like, screaming in my defense. But now the one that, scream that was screaming in my defense is also speaking in a different language. And is literally, like, just hitting the other one and, like, knocking across the room. And, like, shit in my room is getting destroyed. And so all of a sudden... This was the end of it. This is where that whatever vesticular, not really, I don't know what, the, the third type of hallucination that you get the, like, the weird sensations like flying and stuff like that. Sure. This is where that kind of kicked in. Mm. And so I'm sitting there and whenever I hear the, um, them fighting and everything, I start to act like I want to get up and the bad one doing the Harry Potter chant starts to lunge for me. And so the good one grabs him, pulls him back, and then puts a hand out toward me. And when he does, I all of a sudden get this, like, really crazy electricity, like, sensation in my body. And, I mean, it's, like, whipping through, like, from my head to my toes and, like, just going all around. I can feel it. And I start to, like, levitate off of the bed. And I feel myself, like, lifting up into the air. And then all of a sudden, I just kind of glance over and the good one body slams the bad one to the ground and then i just fall back onto my bed and when i fall back onto my bed i sit up very quickly and everything in my room is like completely normal nothing's heck? been touched i obviously am not covered in electricity and i look at my bathroom and it's back to being a mirror whoa absolutely not uh once i heard the harry potter shit yeah i was gone i was like no you're like i checked mm -hmm. out nothing bye <laughs> no i didn't even check out i was just like absolutely not i am not going to sit there and let this thing come at me like that well, absolutely I not was paralyzed in my defense so you know <laughs> in my defense i was like paralyzed so um i literally could couldn't do that yeah. oh my god that is terrifying um, in my opinion this next one was even scarier okay so mm. i fun fact am terrified of dolls I don't Stop. like Stop. I'm already over it. I don't nope. like dolls. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. This is like horror film 101. Absolutely not. Yep. So this sleep paralysis episode started with a dream. So in this dream, I'm at work. I'm working at the hospital. And for some reason, the Grey's Anatomy characters are there. And they're like, hey, Sam, we're going to go sneak out to the like abandoned parking garage and smoke some weed. Do you want to come? That's so smart. Yeah, like, sure. Yeah, and I was like, sure, why not? So we go out there. It's an abandoned parking uh, parking garage. Super scary, super sketchy, broken down, looks unsafe. We're all out there. They're smoking weed. I smoke some weed. One of the characters, don't know who she is, but she, because I have not watched Grey's Anatomy in so long, that was like a very much a college show for me. Sure. And um, this happened like a good like year after college and also I hadn't watched it since like my junior year in college. So, um, I don't know most of the characters, but it was this girl, and she finds this, like, baby doll um, just chilling in the parking garage. And she goes and picks it up, like, by its leg or some nope, shit like goodbye. that. Nope, goodbye. Absolutely and not. And she brings it over to me, and she's like, dude, what the fuck? And, like, it's one of those that, do you remember, like, those baby dolls that, like, they'll have, like, a real, like, a baby hand or forearm and a real baby head and a real baby feet and stuff like that. But then the rest of their body is just, like, cotton, like, padding. Yeah. You know, like, with a white cotton padding. And yeah. And you put clothes over that's what kind of baby doll it was. And so basically, um, she brings it over to me. I'm like, dude, get that shit away from me. And it looked very dirty, very tattered, very worn. And it had something written on its forehead. And I cannot remember for the life of me what it was. Um, I just remember it was, like, written in black. And it looked like almost like a mix between Sharpie and, like, charcoal rubbed on it. It had the gist of something like, why did you leave me? Or something like that. Like, it was really weird. So anyways, this dream ends and I wake up in my room. 
And when I wake up in my room, my best friend at the time was there sitting on the bed watching TV. And I was like, oh, okay, I must have, like, like she must have been over hanging out. And because I'm working nights, my, like, everything has gotten flipped. And right. I just fell asleep while watching TV. And she looks over at me and she's like, oh, did you go? Oh, you fell asleep. And I went to say something and I couldn't move. And she was like, oh, are you having sleep paralysis again? Because I had told her that I had started having sleep paralysis episodes. And so I managed to let out, like, a mm-hmm, like that. And she was like, oh, okay. And so she was like, well, I can imagine you'd have, like, spooky sleep shit happening with that fucking baby doll you brought home. And I looked at her and she was like, the baby doll, like, you know what I'm talking about. And so at this point, this is where it kind of slips into, like, more of a dream world again. And so at this point, I'm able to open my mouth and talk, and I'm like, what baby doll are you talking about? She's like, the one sitting on your TV stand. And so at this no, point, this is once again not. where the weird, like, yeah, where the weird, like, sensations happen. And it's like I am scooted across my bed and kind of, like, sitting up now. And I look, and I'm still, like, not able to move. And I look, and I'm, like, still looking at her, and I look over, and the baby doll is sitting on the very top of my, st- my TV stand at the time. And it's the same exact baby doll from the dream. And I just was like, I didn't bring that home. All of a sudden, this fucking baby doll jumps up and, like, like stands Bye. by itself on the floor. Nope. And starts, like, weirdly lengthily, like, walking towards me. When I say lengthily, I mean it's like it wasn't, it didn't have good control over its limbs. And just starts, like, kind of scooting toward me. And so my friend is freaking out and screaming and trying to get behind me. I'm still paralyzed because I'm having sleep paralysis. And she's like, do something, do something, do something. And so when the baby doll gets about halfway across the floor to me, I start realizing that I can make out the outline of something behind the baby doll, like making it walk. And this outline was about eight feet tall. And it was just like some type of being behind the baby doll, holding it by its little hands and like making it walk across the floor like a kid would and i start hearing this like really deep laughter from like way up in the air so it gets close to me and i don't know why but i open my mouth and when i do i start speaking in tongues as if i'm like in pentecostal church Stop. and when this happens i fully gain like the ability to like move and stuff like that and i'm laying in my bed by myself best friend's not there tv's not on it's daytime and i'm not even laying in the same position as i was like Whenever I got scooted across the bed, I'm in the original position I was in whenever I first, like, woke up from the sleep paralysis. No. But the thing is, like, I know that this wasn't a dream because I had all the physical sensations of being awake. And I didn't, like, open my eyes and wake up. I just, like, when that happened, everything went back to the way it was and I was awake, if that makes sense. And then the last one that I, is, like, very memorable for me really wasn't scary at all. It's, like, set up to be scary. But, or, like, the last one I had from the Vivance era. Um, and did you ever watch the scary movie The Grudge? I don't watch scary movies for the fact that I don't like being scared. Oh, okay. Well, you picked a great person to have a Weird Wednesday uh, segment with. <laughs> no, I. So. Here's the thing: if it's like scary random stuff like this, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. But like, I have very very high anxiety, so I don't want to trigger anything that's not supposed to happen. If you get my drift on that. Yeah, um, you don't want to bring in weird shit. Well, that, but also, like, I don't want to die of, like, some kind of, like, heart palpitation issue. Or... Oh. I get scared. I get scared that that shit's going to happen. It's, like, my worst nightmare. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, I just avoid trying to get myself scared. Like, there was one time someone you. scared me, and I literally, like, had a panic attack on the floor, and my heart rate was so high that I should have went to the emergency room. To get, you know, some, like, calming whatever. Get some but, drugs. Yeah, but I did not. So here yeah. we are. Well, I'm glad you didn't die from that. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad I well, didn't the go grudge, <laughs> Yeah. The Grudge was basically one of my favorite scary movies when I was a kid. It's just this, like... It's the grudge is because it's a girl that has a grudge because she was murdered um, very unjustly by, I think it was her stepdad or something like that. And um, she was choked to death and, like, strangled. And her brother, little brother, was also killed, too. And um, so was his cat. And so they both, like, when they come back, they only come back in a pair. And he has this weird, like, thing where he, like, will just be kind of standing stilly, like, in the background. And, like, he'll randomly let out this, like, meow, like, that sounds like a cat. Very, it's Mm. spooky. Okay, I know it sounds random, but it's spooky. And she makes this noise that's, like, I'm going to try to do it. It's, like, uh 
like that. Yeah. Because she was choking when she died, and so it's her basically gasping for air. And she just, like, shows up and drags people to the afterlife or kills them. Because she's trying to get revenge. So anyways, in this in this final Vyvanse and do sleep paralysis, um, I had started to gain awareness that I was having sleep paralysis. So I see her, and she's crawling out of this, like, cabinet on my entertainment center. And she, like, starts walking toward me, but I just, like, glance over at her, and I realize what's happening. And I just said, like, in this dream state, so not physically out, out loud, but I said it, like, in my head. I was like, you're not real. This is just sleep paralysis. And when I did, she, like, got angry and, like, screamed, but then just disappeared. And so mm. this happened probably 10 or 15 times after that, that morning, while I was still having sleep paralysis. Probably only lasted, like, two minutes, but to me, it felt like I was sitting there for, like, a good 30, 45 minutes. But every time she would pop up, I would just, and, like, there was a point where she tried to, like, pop up next to my bed and, like, just spook me. And I was like, dude, you're not real. Like, it's this isn't really happening. I'm literally just having sleep paralysis. And that's kind of how my nightmares are, too. Like, you know how I told you that, like, I the whole atmosphere. I was sobbing will, like, the entire time. <laughs> oh, my um, God, no. When I have a nightmare and I become aware that I'm having a nightmare, typically, like, if I'm being chased by something, if, like, there's a spooky thing there trying to hurt me or there's, like, a person, like, an intruder or something like that, when I realize that I'm in a nightmare because of the vibrating, I'll look at them and just be like, oh, this isn't real. And they always look super, like, offended or hurt that I would say that. And then mm. they just disappear, and then I wake up. So this was the same exact thing now happening in sleep paralysis. And every time I'd look at her, I'd just be like, you're not real. Like, just stop. Like, there's one point where she came out of, like, my air conditioner vent and, like, hit it, and the vent, like, flew across the room and stuff like that. And I was like, you're not real. Like, this, uh, this will be over soon. Like, I'm just having sleep paralysis. And finally, I gained, like, feeling back in my arms and stuff like that, and she didn't pop back up, so... But yeah, so that was the last Vyvanse induced one. And so then I had another one whenever I was on muscle relaxers um, back in 2021 for some back issues I was having. Right. And so this one was not a scary one at all. It sounds very disturbing, but just please know that I thought this was really cool during my sleep paralysis episode. <laughs> so, like, no, for real, like, in my episode, I didn't realize I was having sleep paralysis. Ah. So, you know, yeah, you know that I'm, I'm a, like, I love to garden. I love to have plant. Like, I just, I'm a big plant person. And so the day before this happened, I had been planting um, seeds, like, for that year, like, for that summer or whatever. And I was planting a lot of melon seeds. And so as I was waking up the next morning, I felt this, like, really weird grainy texture in my bed. I don't know what it was. As far as I know, there was nothing really there, and it was just me touching my sheets. But, like, it crossed over into dream world as, like, graininess. And so, whenever I, as I come to, I realize that I, like, can't feel my chest or my legs or anything like that, and I can't really sit up or anything like that. All I can do is kind of move around my arms. And so, when I'm doing this, I l pull my arm over because I feel the, like, grainy texture, but now it feels like something is, like, on my arm. So, when I pull my arm over, there are sprouts coming out of my skin, like plant sprouts. And so I look closer, and I can see that, like, the, the seeds I was planting the day before, they, like, had burrowed into my skin because really? I must have spilled them on my bed or something like that in the middle of the night. Or, like, before the, I went to bed that night. And so during the night, they, like, burrowed in my skin and started sprouting plants. And so that sounds really disturbing. And honestly, that's one of, like, my biggest irrational fears because you see tons of horror movies where plants, like, crawl inside of people's, like, skin and stuff mm, like that. I too, but yeah. But in this sleep paralysis episode, I was, like, I was so dumbfounded. I thought this was the coolest thing ever. Like, I remember thinking, like, dude, one, I got to pull these and save them so I can plant them. And two, <laughs> I'm about to be, like, a scientific, like, miracle. I'm about to be, like, the first, like, successful cohabitation between, like, a plant and a human. <laughs> like, you know? Like, wow. And I thought, I thought that I was about to be revolutionary. And I remember, like, in the dream, like, in, the, well, I say dream, in this dream state that I was in, I remember I was just so amused, and I was, like, reaching over with my hand, and I was trying to pull at them easily to get them out so I didn't, like, break them. And I, w like, fully come to, like, when I'm finally out of the sleep paralysis and I'm able to move fully, I wake up pinching my skin. And I was a little, I'm not going to lie, I was, I was a little let down when I realized it wasn't Oh, my real. gosh. <laughs> and then yeah. there's Sam. <laughs> yeah. And then the final one that I had was the other night. It was Friday night after doing, like, a week and a half of research for sleep paralysis. 
Um, and I was speaking to, Friday at work, I was speaking to a coworker and friend um, about this topic. And I was like, dude, you're going to have to listen to it. It's super cool. And she was like, I've had some like sleep paralysis um, experiences too, but it wasn't like anything typical. She was like, um, basically, she talked about how she was doing some meditation before bed. And when she did, she got stuck in that weird, like, in-between dream and, like, reality state. And mm. she just was, like, in a dark room and heard this, like, uh, intruder. And then there were, like, these different animals jumping out of the darkness at her and stuff like that. And so, basically, when I woke up in the middle of the night, Friday night, I was having sleep paralysis. And I heard an intruder. And it was like an intruder, a sleep paralysis, whatever. But I still had that weird sensation one where you get like the bodily sensation. And so I wasn't able to move or anything like that. But when I was talking to her earlier that day, she said that what she did was she imagined like this glowing white light um, forming around her. Like, you know, and that's a very common thing in meditation. And so for some reason, when I heard this like fake intruder, my first reaction was, that's okay. I'm just going to surround myself and my cats in white light and he's not gonna be able to touch us and so i did oh lord i just like pushed like i imagined myself pushing energy out of my body like you do during meditation and like, like put myself in a white bubble and like found my cats in the room like mentally and put one around them too and just pushed out the bubble and the intruder just disappeared and i went back to sleep <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the next morning when I woke up, I was like, oh my god, that was sleep paralysis. And I thought it was kind of ironic, that but it was also so... funny. Because I literally, yeah, I just, it was funny. No, because I, re now that you bring that up, I had something similar. This is when I was still with my ex, and um, we were sleeping, and I couldn't move. And I just kept feeling like someone was, like, banging on the front door and, like, somehow opened it or something. Like, I was freaking, the I was freaking out. And all I can remember is, like, feeling all of those emotions, closing my eyes, and then, like, actually moving in the bed. And I was like, babe, babe. Like, I'm scared. Like, I was so scared. I was literally terrified. Oh, my gosh. And he was just like, no, like, the door is locked. Like, you're fine. And then, like, we just, like, cuddled and, like, went back to sleep. But, like, <laughs> literally, I remember that now. Wow. See, this is, this is how my memory works. It just, whenever it's, like, applicable, it just kind of sets in. It's just, mm -hmm. yeah. We love that for me. But yeah. Well, that was all I had for sleep paralysis. This was fun. This was a good time. I know. This was a fun, weird Wednesday. I'm so excited for the it next was. one. It was such a good first Wednesday. A weird Wednesday. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, please, by all means, like we always tell you during the actual episodes, find us on social media. I'm S-A-M-M-E-D. That's Sam if you do. On Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and you can find the podcast at Enhance on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Anchor, and we are Enhance Podcast on YouTube. So, uh, Gabby, what's your social media? Social media is per usual. My Instagram is G S A B A T one two three four, and my TikTok is Gabby S eighty. Um, I hope you find and enjoy all of the content on there as well. Um, because TikTok's fun. I like TikTok. Yeah. Please go blow up our DMs and go look at all the cute stories and posts I have saved of my beautiful cats. They are the best little creatures in the entire world. So yeah. I'm obsessed with them. Yeah. And all right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we will see you on the next episode of Enhance. And um, please tune in next month for next month's Weird Wednesday. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for listening to Weird Wednesday. Tune in the third Wednesday of every month for more strange, unsettling, and spooky.